In this video, we're going to have a look at how to create internal elevations of a bathroom. Uh, we've got a, a bathroom here that's partially modelled, uh, but what we'll find is once we go into the view, we'll see that there's not really a lot of information, and some of the information is also conveyed incorrectly. So we're going to have a look at how we might want to adjust those in 3D, and when we might want to stop using 3D and start using 2D. Again, to create this, we're going to be using our documentation tool. So we're going to just reduce design just so we can see it a bit better. And this is the option down here that we want to choose. So we've talked a lot about the section tool and the elevation tool. We I haven't really done a lot of videos on the interior elevation tool, so that's what I'm doing tonight. When we go into the interior elevation tool, there are some settings that we, we should understand, and we can change these later. Uh, but I'll, I'll just go through these now. When we're talking about exterior elevations and sections, we tend to have a infinite vertical range, meaning we're seeing everything. When we're doing interior elevations, we definitely don't do that. So I want to have a limited range, and I'm only going from zero to this story up to a particular height. Now, I've got a raked ceiling in this bathroom, so... I could make this higher, and I will make this higher for now, just so it's not confusing. And then we can change that later. I don't use zones very much, so I could choose this option, detect and fit to zones, but in this case it's not going to be helpful. And horizontal range, basically how far can we see? We could use limited, because it's inside a a room and there's walls all around it, we can also choose the infinite range and, and that's not really going to affect anything. We can change the name. I can, I'll can. i definitely change the ID and the name at some point, but it's not something that we need to do straight away. The marker symbol, you might like how it is, you might not like how it is. We'll go into the settings of those a bit later on as well. Worry about that. Model display, this is very much like the elevation and section tool. Uh, again, I won't worry about those at the moment. We can come back to those. Story levels, I hate story levels. Um, obviously, having stories is very important, but that's not the way I want to show information or show heights. I'll do those independently. And grids, we don't need grids because we don't have grids in this particular project. So I press OK. Now I need to draw them. So I could draw each elevation individually. I could use a polygonal method. Depending on the shape of the room I want to do, that may be a very good option. If it's a very simple box, rectangular box, I'm probably just going to use the rectangular or the rotated rectangular method. So let's choose this one. Uh, it's very hard to see when you've got the true line weight on where I want to click. And I want to be quite deliberate about this. So I'm going to click right on the corner, zoom out, click on the other corner, and then I have to be very clever about this as well. If I was to click now, anytime, we can see that there's four lines that are representing where I would be cutting my view. Now what I want to do is to view the, the wall, but I also want to view everything in the space. So if I was to click anywhere here, I'd be cutting through my toilet, I'd be cutting through this wall, I'd be cutting through the garden, and I'd miss some information. So I want to move in far enough, and, and you can see that we can overlap as well, which is good. I want to move in quite a long way. So I'm having all my markers sitting in the middle of the room, and the reason why I want them in the middle of the room is so that they're seeing everything, but they're not getting in the way. Once I'm finished with that, I will click, and it's going to place this big marker. Now, this big marker is ridiculously large for a 1 to 100 plan, so the reality is I'm not going to show this like this. I'm going to turn this layer off and only show this once I create a detailed plan at a scale of 1 to 50, or more likely 1 to 20. And once we're at 1 to 20, we see that this detail marker now looks a lot more sane. And it's small enough that I can change the names of these and represent these really well. Now, other things don't work. The, my, my annotations, my text, my labels are now ridiculously small. And that's why detailed plans are a little bit 
more complicated and I will tend to use different um, annotations, different text and different layers, different layer combinations when I'm doing detailed plans and I'll have a look at that later but we're just worrying about the internal elevations at the moment. So once I've created this marker, I'm, I'm of course not just creating a marker but I'm creating drawings. So if I go to my interior elevation we see that this one now exists. Now this one's called IE-01. I can rename this if I want to at any point and that's why I like explaining it this way. So I could call this E maybe and I'll call this ensuite. Maybe dash interior elevations. Now there's a lot of text there and that's definitely not how I want it to read but this is okay E interior elevations and then I can have a particular view after that so let's just click on these and see what they look like so what's this viewing this is the roof up here what's this this is my wall or my uh, my joinery the outside line is where I chose to click and we see that we can't see anything it's just white there's no line but that's where my wall finished. This is a piece of slab, this is a piece of slab, my toilet's behind here so it's partly hidden and then I've got a wall and a wall and a wall all in the distance. I've got lots of walls so like I said I've got a raked ceiling but what we're seeing here is the walls tend to stop here but I actually want to fill in this space. Now I'm looking at the toilet, my toilet is floating. Why is that? Just because I had the setting wrong. So when I go into the setting we see that it's 100 mil above the ground. So sometimes it's not until we create these views or maybe a very detailed 3D walkthrough of a building that we realize there's a problem and then we need to make changes. Maybe I look at this and go, this is not a nice toilet. I don't, I don't want to have this as an object. So maybe we actually use this as a design tool and so we can see that that's not how we want to represent our toilet or not the sort of toilet that we want to use. So now we could maybe choose a different object. Let's get rid of that, that's annoying. So when I go to my toilets, I often, even though it's not a toilet, tend to use the bidet object as a toilet uh, just because it represents a lot nicer. So I could either have a floor mounted object or a wall hung object and then when I go into those there's op different options as well similarly with the vanity basin I can choose to change settings on those we see that this is partially hidden so I need to elevate that more Unfortunately, there's not a huge range of options in terms of bowl types or tap types. That being said, there are quite a lot, but sometimes it's not the ones that I would like. So we have to decide whether you're going to be able to use what's here or whether you choose to have none and then we add our own later. Do I want to show the windows with such detail? Do I want to show their opening type? Probably not, so maybe I'm going to go into the window setting and then I can choose how much detail I want to show. So maybe I want to make it more like 1 to 100. Maybe I want to override the settings or maybe if I go into the opening line settings and I can actually turn the opening line off so I don't see that. So it just looks a bit clearer for here. The problem is I'm changing the object which means that I'm changing this both in the interior elevation and also in the exterior elevation. So if I still want to see that in the exterior elevation I can't really turn that off here. So I need to be aware of the effects that I have. Now this was my roof again and we can see that 
it doesn't read very clearly because of course we're cutting through the rake in the other orientation. This is a very simple roof. It's a basic structure, it's not a composite structure. So it's not conveying a lot of information. So we need to again, just like with the detailing in the previous video, we need to decide whether what we're seeing here is of value and of enough value and what else we might need to do to represent this. Now we're seeing here that this looks transparent and this door is actually open as well. So if I go into these settings, I can go into all of them, interior elevation settings, and when I go to my model, I could choose to turn transparency off, which means I can't see through that door anymore. And maybe that's more like the setting that I want to have. Now, if I want to make changes to this, I could add more 3D model elements, if I, or I could adjust it. And I could adjust it from the 3D model, or I could adjust it in plan. Of course, it's just going to have 3D ramifications. So if I stretch a wall, it's going to stretch it. The other thing I need to be aware of is layers. I might not have all my layers turned on, so at any point I might remember, turn them all on and realize that that's why I had this funny thing because I had a ceiling here that I wasn't showing. Is that what that ceiling should look like? Do I actually want to have a ceiling here? I don't know. So having a 3D model is very helpful, so don't dismiss all of the 3D information from your model too quickly and you can use this as a view to change some of the settings. So you might decide that you want to change this to a composite and realize that you actually probably want a, a composite ceiling, not a, a simple ceiling. And then when you do that, you might realize that some of your settings are wrong, height settings, so then you can change those to be the right sort of setting as well. Or maybe that wall, because it's glass, should actually only be 2100 high. So we can do a lot of work in this, and we can, of course, add 2D information into it, or we can make a lot of changes to it. What I would recommend is the last or all of the others first. So change the 3D model, add 2D information to it, and then when you can't do anything else, create a 2D detail of it. So we could reference it and create a 2D detail, but that would sort of be unjustified. What we could also do is to maybe create an independent drawing, maybe an independent detail or an independent worksheet. So I'm going to use a detail and call this ensuite elevations and I can I think that was my third show as trace reference and then I can start to redraw things or I could go to that view, select what I wanted to, copy, this is a little bit scarier but sometimes it works, ensuite elevation and paste and that's just like the t detail marker, it's going to take all that information and turn it into 2D information. Why would I want to do this? Because I might decide if I'm going to have a ceiling I don't actually want to show anything above the ceiling, so instead I'll take my polyline, make it very, very thick for now, click, click, turn the true line weight on, and that's what an interior elevation should really look like. All I want to see is a black outline around the box and then lines inside and now I might decide if these lines are only in elevation and aren't supposed to be very thick then I'm going to change them to pen 1. I might decide at any point I'm still seeing too much information I don't want to see these ridiculous fake lines that shouldn't exist so I can delete anything that shouldn't be there. The problem with this approach is you get to the point where you wonder why you actually copied it at all and realize that it might have just been better just to retrace something to begin with. Maybe I'm going to add a mirror in here. It 
How do we show that it's a mirror? Maybe I put a, a line through it and then I have to annotate it. How do I show this vanity? Well, what's the vanity made from? So I could model the whole thing or I could create it just with 2D lines. So I could either use this as a design tool or a documentation tool or both. I find that staying in 3D is good for a while, but then it starts to become very difficult to understand um, and limited with what you can communicate. So sooner or later, I'm probably going to go to my 3D drawing and take some information and explode it and start to detail it up. But I'm going to do that in a way that I'm not destroying other information. So I could play with this for a while, hopefully it makes sense what I'm doing. I'm just starting to try to add in everything that we should actually see in the bathroom and, and all of its detailing. Um, hopefully this makes sense for you and hopefully you can see how you can use it 